Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And we're going to pick up right where we left off yesterday. We're in our series entitled No Doubts. I want you to turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17. Matthew 17. This is Matthew's account of the story from Mark, chapter 9, where uh, the father had brought his son who was... Uh, uh, oppressed by this demonic spirit, mute spirit, I think he called it, that threw him into the fire and into the water. In other words, he was trying to destroy him. It was a, it was a, uh, a self-destructive type spirit. And it was oppressing his son to the point that he was desperate. So he brought, he had obviously heard about uh, what Jesus was doing, what his disciples were doing, and they brought, uh, he brought his son to Jesus' disciples while Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And of course, they couldn't cast it out. They were moved by the, the song and dance that that demonic spirit was putting on. They were also moved, I believe, by the faithlessness, the unbelief and the doubt that was prevalent in that generation and in that crowd. And so they, they just could not get the results that they needed. But Jesus came down and, to make a long story short, cast that spirit out of that boy but in the middle of that, he said something to the father uh, in response to what the father said to him. His father said to Jesus, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. You know, many times we're putting it all over on God when we're not thinking about, you know, what our responsibility is in receiving. Many times we're blaming God, the giving in, for problems in our, our own life for not receiving by faith. And I can tell you, Jesus put that ball right back into his, uh, that father's court. And he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So again, Jesus is saying to all of us right there, we can believe. In other words, we can have that pure faith that he's talking about with no doubts and no unbelief. We don't have to walk around faithless in unbelief and in doubt. We can believe for the impossible. Now... Jesus' disciples, who did not get results that day, when they got alone with Jesus privately, they asked him, why couldn't we cast it out? That's a good question. I'm glad they asked this question. But then verse 20, Jesus said to them, so Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Now I want you to see that right there, that he says, because of your unbelief. Now, the faith that we're talking about that believes for the impossible originates and comes from God as a free gift. So faith comes from God, but unbelief and doubts are self-induced. They come because we have too much of ourself in the center of our life. See, if you want to get rid of doubts and unbelief, you've got to get yourself out of the picture, so to speak. You've got to get yourself out of the center of your life. You've got to become Jesus-focused and Jesus centered. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Is his finished work not what we can do for him, but what he's already done and accomplished and finished for us. It's not what we can do to earn our forgiveness, it's what Jesus blood does continually cleansing us from all sin and relinquish and releases us from all condemnation. So the degree to which you have yourself in the picture and in the center of your life. You become self-focused and you're relying on your own self-efforts and self-works. That's the degree where you're going to have self-condemnation because you're going to fail. I can tell you, that's not, you know, I'm not uh, prophesying doom and gloom. I'm just giving you a reality here, okay? We need to get out of that state of denial, so to speak, and just recognize that righteousness is not going to come from us. We need to get ourselves out of the picture, but the degree to which you have yourself in the center and in the picture, in the focus, is the degree which you're going to have self-condemnation, and that's where the enemy is going to produce doubts and unbelief in your life. You're going to disqualify yourself to yourself and uh, not get the results. So Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Well, see, if it's their unbelief, it's our unbelief, we can get rid of it. See, if it were, if it were something that was coming, if it were a flaw with with God or a flaw with the God kind of faith, which it isn't, 
then we'd be in trouble because there's nothing we can do on that. But listen, this is unbelief. And he's, he's actually telling them, he's identifying the problem, why they didn't get results that day, why they didn't succeed when he did. He said, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, Again, we've already established the mustard seed. It's not just the size of the mustard seed he's talking about. He is, but also the type of the seed he's talking about. A mustard plant cannot be crossbred with other things. In other words, you can't corrupt a mustard seed, a mustard plant, any more than faith can be corrupted. Now, when we have non-corrupted, pure faith, this is what, can, what we can do. You can say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Now that kind of sounds like Mark chapter 11, verse 23, doesn't it? And see, a lot of people discount this, but listen, we're not talking about our faith. We're talking about the faith of God right here, the faith that God used to create the heavens and the earth and all the universe. He says you can use that same kind of faith. It doesn't take much, but it takes a pure, non-corrupted faith where you don't have unbelief and doubts in there. And it says, you can say, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So again, Jesus is telling them, really, about the same thing he told to that father of the child. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Now again, Jesus is not talking code language here. He's talking the life of a believer, a new covenant believer who's using the faith of God. I tell you, that is good news right there. And that's news we need to take heed to. But we have to get rid of We have to deal with the doubts and the unbelief and get rid of those in our life. Because if we don't, they will nullify and negate the faith of God from working in our life. We will not get the God kind of results and, and, and that God wants us to have. Now, let's go over to Mark's Gospel again, Mark chapter 6. Again, I think we've already pointed this out before, that Mark's Gospel is basically Peter's account uh, eyewitness account that Mark recorded uh, that he told him. So Peter, of course, was an eyewitness account to all these things. He was with Jesus. He was going through all these things. And so he talked to, to, to Mark, who was a contemporary of Peter and also Paul, by the way. But I believe that this, this gospel that he's talking about, Mark's gospel, really is Peter's eyewitness account. So you see the progression here that Peter's going through of getting himself out of the picture and of course learning the New Covenant New Testament principle of walking by faith. I see we see that progression all the way through that. That's why uh, Mark's Gospel, Peter's account, deals so much with the faith of God and, and unbelief and doubt and getting rid of those things. Now uh, Mark chapter 6 verse number 1 it says, Then Jesus went out from there and came to his own country and his disciples followed him. Verse 2, And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things, and what wisdom is this which is given to him that such mighty works are performed by his hands? So Jesus went to church, like you know we do, and he began to teach. But he didn't teach the same old humdrum, dry, dry as a bone stuff that they heard week in and week out. That, that legalism, that self-centered, self-performance type stuff, Jesus began to come in and teach a different message. And of course, they saw results. They saw manifestation also. They saw the God kind of results and heard about the God kind of faith because Jesus came to preach the gospel. He said, I'm anointed to preach the gospel. He didn't come to establish another set of rules, regulations, another religion, another, another law. He came to fulfill the law and establish the new covenant in his blood which is a life of faith. And see, the faith of God connects us with the power, ability, and resources of God. That's why when we believe, when we use the faith of God with no doubting, no unbelief, we're going to get the God kind of results. We're going to be able to have the impossible come to pass in our life. And, and so they were astonished. Astonished means your mouth is, is open, your, your chin is dragging the floor because of what he's saying. I believe he was talking about what, it, what a life of a New Testament, New Covenant believer who believes the gospel message can, can, be, can be living in. And it's not something, they've been hearing all this man-centered stuff, all of a sudden they heard a God-centered gospel. And then in verse 3, they begin to talk themselves out. It says, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? 
And so they were offended at him. So they just talked themselves right out of what Jesus was saying, wasn't, didn't he? And then verse 4, Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Verse 5, Now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. I want you to see right there, you know, uh, a religious mindset, and I read this for years and just kind of glazed over what was said right there. It didn't, didn't say that Jesus would do no mighty work there. That, you know, he got ticked off at their bad attitude, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to do any, any works here. I'm not going to do any of the mighty miracles that you've heard me do everywhere else. No, he said he could do no mighty work there. He could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people. Few, according to the Bible, would mean anywhere from about five to eight people. And then uh, and and healed them. I, I believe the Greek rendering brings this out right here, and, and there's some commentary on this that that actually reads it this way: except that he laid his hands on a few sick people with minor ailments and healed them. That's all he could do there. Now a lot of people in their religious mindset that is, they just they just believe that well, Jesus could just do anything he wanted to any time he wanted to. Well, that's not what it says here. It says he could do no mighty work there. And then in verse 6, it tells us why. It says, And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about in the villages in a circuit teaching. I want you to see that right there. It was their unbelief that limited what Jesus could do there. Now, Jesus had gone other places. They believed that message. They, he, in fact, had great multitudes full of sick people with all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of diseases, and all kinds of physical ailments and infirmities. And Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus healed them all. But it, here in his own hometown, he could do no mighty work there, and it was because of their unbelief. See, their doubt and unbelief tied the hands of Jesus. It limited what God could do here. Now, a lot of people say, well, I just don't believe that. I just believe God is just going to do anything He wants to. Well, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to everlasting life. Yet I know there are scads and scores of people out there who are not born again. They're not receiving the salvation, the free salvation that God provided in His Son Jesus. And you know why? Because of unbelief and doubt. Now, unbelief and doubt can come just because of ignorance, just because you don't know any better. You know, that's, it. that's easy. You, do, you hear the truth, and the truth sets you free. But there's also an ignorance, uh, or, or also an unbelief and doubt that comes by hearing the message and just rejecting it. And boy, that is a sad state of affairs because that means you've been hardened in your heart, and you're just not going to hear that anymore. But I want you to see how Jesus, uh, how he remedied that. He went around, went about in the villages in a circuit teaching. So he didn't give up on it. He began to teach, same thing, over and over again. He began to teach the principles of the gospel message, of, of the finished work that he was about to accomplish about his shed blood and the forgiveness of sins. All those are centerpieces of the gospel message. He began to teach that in a circuit, going around teaching over and over again, because that, you know, it, that's how you're going to get rid of unbelief in your life, is hearing the gospel, hearing the message of Jesus. But I want you to see right there, I did, uh, that is just a great example right there. It says that Jesus could do no mighty work there, even though he, he was anointed, even though he did other works everywhere else. But here, it was because of their unbelief, they limited what Jesus could do. And see, I believe that unbelief and doubts are really the, the common denominator of what we've been looking at the last two days. It says, you know, if we don't doubt in our heart, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. He told his disciples it was because of their unbelief. They didn't get, they didn't have the God kind of results that day. And then again, he's talking about here that Jesus could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. The common denominator is doubts and unbelief. And that's all tied in with self-centeredness, self-righteousness, and the resulting self-condemnation. So when we get self out of the picture and put Jesus in the center, in the focus of our faith and our life, then we get rid of the doubts and our faith is strengthened and of course that takes the limits off and we can believe for the impossible. That's good news today. Join us again tomorrow if you'd like additional resources and materials. Go to TonyCowan.org and we will see you tomorrow.